Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. For this month's Birds Notes program, we're going to talk about those first signs of spring. And joining us from the Audubon Center in Huntington is bird expert and conservation biologist Mark Labar. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, you're very welcome. I'm gl always glad to be here. Well, it's, it's great to have you here during uh, this very snowy spring um, to, to talk about what's going on out there. And even though this snow is out there, um, there are indeed signs of spring in the bird world. So let's get to it. Yeah. So, you know, last month we talked about getting ready for bluebirds. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I thought it was a little bit early, but we had a nice sunny day not too long ago. And sure enough, outside, uh, I heard the first bluebirds. Uh, they weren't doing their full song, but it was a male that was kind of singing. Um, <laughs> so I'm glad that uh, our uh, bluebird boxes are ready for them. I haven't heard them since with this snow. It's kind of set things back. Um, but bluebirds and uh, robins are, you know, they're... The relatives and they they sometimes stick around all winter long. Hmm. Uh, this next picture is from uh, Robert Batten of Jericho Center, and he had a, a lone bluebird that was hanging out uh, with him all winter. Uh, as long as they have food and the you know pretty much berries and stuff like that, they'll stick around. But um, you know, that was very nice to walk outside my door and hear the bluebirds singing. Right. And and it, would they stay in the bluebird boxes or are they in holes in trees or, or how are they keeping shelter if they're sticking around? They, you know, blue, uh, birds have an awesome um, way to keep themselves warm, <laughs> feathers. Mm. And so uh, they won't necessarily go in the boxes, but they'll, um, they'll find a safe shelter uh to get out of the weather and stuff like that right. so um and again they can fly mm. so when we get a big dump <laughs> like we have they can go where the snow isn't great and so what are some of the other uh birds that uh, folks are seeing and that you're seeing up at audubon so there was that warm weather that hit not too long ago and i got uh, a rush of letters about uh red wing blackbirds showing up um, yes. You know, folks were seeing them and they were coming into their feeder, um, which is unusual for blackbirds. Um, they, you know, they're not necessarily a feeder bird, but um, when they're back and that's the only food source, they will take hold of that. Um, again, with this snow, I haven't heard much of them, so they may have retreated south a little bit. Um, they but, were... Uh, it, they're it, close. Yeah, even a, a front porch forum in my town, there was a, a, a lot of uh, interest in, boy, it seems pretty early for the red ring wing blackbirds here and people people have been seeing them. Yeah, so it was one of those things. We got that warm weather and um, it could be a little different story for them right now, but they, again, have wings. And so if they need to find a place that has less snow, uh, they can't. Okay. And uh, we're, you're also seeing cardinals. Now, I, they often will stay as well, and they're so beautiful. Yeah, they'll, stay, the they'll stick around all year. And the reason I brought up the cardinal is at the same time I heard the bluebirds singing in my backyard, uh, the cardinal was singing as well. Mm. So even though they're around and they give us that nice little splash of red all winter, again, feeding on um, a lot of those fruit uh, trees, um, this warmer weather and the the you know the length of day has shifted birds into singing mode so it was great to hear the bluebird and the cardinal go into town yeah and uh, what what about out in the woods what are you seeing there so you know one of the birds we sugar here at the audubon our mm. sugar on snow parties are at the end of the month so folks can come down uh for that but i call this my the sugar bird which is the brown creeper and the brown creeper, which normally creeps uphill, you know, up the tree, up the side of the tree. Right. Um, this bird is one of the first birds that we hear singing um, in the woods uh, when we're sugaring. And so um, they've also started um, and just, you know, in my mind, when I'm out uh, running the tractor and I hear the creeper, I know it's sugaring season and I know spring hopefully isn't too far away. 
Is that a breeding song? Are most of these songs that, that come up in, in the spring, or are they just happy to feel the warmth? You know, the, le the day length and everything like that mm -hmm. is triggering them into uh, breeding mode. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so they're beginning their songs to let everybody know that, you know, I'm available and uh, also stay out of my territory. Right. <laughs> and uh, you also have an, another very black bird, a, a, grackles, a couple of grackles here. <clears throat> yeah, grackles are another one of the blackbirds that often show up early um, when uh, the first signs of spring are hitting. And so you'll see them in large uh, flocks. They also um, will come to feeders occasionally. So we've been hearing reports of um, at least last week or a couple weeks ago, the grackles were back. Again, whether they're back after this big snowstorm, I'm not sure. We got about a foot here in Huntington, so wow. yeah. they may have uh, found uh, another location to, to weather this. So, so Mark, while we're on blackbirds, what about just blackbird blackbirds? Um, I, I see red wings all the time. I see the grackles. Are blackbirds also um, up here in Vermont? commonly so you know blackbirds are just kind of what the general term that we have for birds like red wing blackbirds and grackles okay uh, starlings might also fall into that category uh they're just you know other than like the red wing which has that um you know that nice red patch sure uh they're they're just pretty much you know people see them fly by and they can be in numbers and they just kind of clump them into the world of blackbirds okay uh, you also have a chickadee that you that you brought in. I've certainly been seeing little little flocks of them. Yeah, and you know they're another species that stays around. But the reason that I wanted to talk about chickadees is, is they've also shifted from their call, which is the chickadee dd that we normally hear, to their two um, note um, breeding song, mm. which is I'm going to try to do it here. I don't know how successful I will be, <laughs> but it's like. And again, once we start hearing that, which oftentimes we can hear in February, it means that it's a shift and they're beginning to think about, um, you know, the upcoming breeding season and things like that. So another nice sound here um, in our snow covered woods. Um, what, and you might, you know, what is uh, that? It's not, the, it's not the regular chickadee sound, but it is indeed a chickadee, so. Yeah, so the chickadees, that chickadee dee dee is them kind of just talking with each other. I'm over here. Oh, you're over there. <laughs> but when they shift into that two note call, um, they're starting to think about uh, the breeding season. Right. And then, of course, there's a whole other world out there on the water. The, the ice is breaking up and we're starting to see um, ducks and geese. Yeah, so this is not something uh, you got to maybe make an effort or if you're lucky enough to live on uh, Lake Champlain, which is beginning to open up, you'll start seeing um, numbers of waterfowl, sometimes, you know, in the thousands. Um, and one of the big ones is the common golden eye. Mm -hmm. And you can see here that it has that nice golden eye, hence its name, and that white spot that's right be right in front of it. So... Uh, these waterfowl are coming back and they may be heading further north, uh, but they're also in their breeding plumage and beginning to think about, um, you know, the upcoming uh, season. Great. And, and, and you have a, uh, we're going to go back to um, ducks, but you have a goose here. Yeah, yeah, this is goose, ducks. They, you know, Canada geese, again, they can be around all winter. Uh, but be people have been uh, reporting that, the, you know, the geese are flying north. Mm. And so when they see that, they uh, begin to think of uh, spring. So oftentimes in those same flocks of golden eye and other ducks, you'll have large numbers of geese as well. Great. And, and you have a, another several ducks that are white bodied black heads because I there are there are a lot of them and it's it's hard for me to distinguish so I think you have a uh, hooded merganser they're so dramatic <laughs> yeah they you know again when you're the folks that are out and you know the Champlain Bridge uh, mm -hmm. is a good place where the ice opens up first and other areas um, where you know you don't have um, don't have ice you'll start to see uh, things like hooded mergansers and you can see them doing their uh, breeding display where they flash that 
um, awesome uh, plumage on their head and they tip their bodies back and they do kind of a little dance again all to um, to attract a mate for the uh, for the summer so um, this is a good time to see some of the birds that you may not necessarily come across during the summer months right another one moving on yeah go ahead yeah okay. they're moving on or once they do start nesting they don't congregate like they mm. do um, so if you're a, a duck and goose watcher, getting out with a spotting scope and seeing them, because oftentimes they're, uh, again, in, in large numbers and they're quite a distance away. So sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to see them. Another one that we see a lot of is the lesser scop. Um, we also um, see the greater scop which looks um, very much like this. And so they can be difficult to, um, to separate. Uh, but they're another one that we um, will congregate in large numbers and folks get excited about this year. And then the ring neck duck is, looks very similar to, to that. It's really it, subtle. It is. And, you know, right there, you know, and, and they call it a ring neck duck, but it's interesting because, it, you know, there's the ring seems to be, to me, out on the tip of the bill. Yeah. And so, uh, again, a gold, <laughs> it has a golden eye like the golden eye, but it has that unique bill coloration, which uh, signifies, um, you know, ring neck ducks. And again, they're coming through. They're mostly passing through. Uh, but this is a great time to see them. Well, Mark, spring is always such an exciting time for bird watchers. Thank you so much for, for teasing us in, into looking up at our trees and into the skies. Uh, if you have a bird related uh, question, you can pass it along to Mark at the address yeah. on your screen, or you can drop Mark an email. His address is mlabar at audubon.org. You can send Mark your questions and pictures, and he'll try to find answers for you on an upcoming edition of Bird Notes. Mark, thank you again so much for joining us. Always great to be here and looking forward to spring. All right. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.